Hi there, my name's Elizabeth and I like to sew smart. Today I'm going to show you my long ruler carrier. Uh, many of you will go to classes and retreats and you've got your, all your long rulers, different lengths of course, and I'm going to show you using your scrap fabric or using that special piece of fabric that you kept for something, how to do this. This was my original long ruler carrier. I'll just flip that over there. It holds your very long ruler. It will hold your half size and also your six and a half inch square ruler. And when you slip them all in, pull it up together and you're ready to transport. On my original pattern, I did have an applique on the outside fabric. Um, but this one is such a busy fabric, it's a pretty fabric, but very, very busy. So I'm not going to put the appliques on here this time. You will need about um, two and a quarter meters of scrap fabric. And, and you can choose to make your um, pockets any fabric. They don't have to match the outside fabric. Mine do because I have the scrap fabric. But you will need um, some wadding, lightweight wadding. Now this is something I'm going to show you. All the pockets will have a top fabric, a lightweight wadding and a lining. But I've actually got short there, I'm short about an inch there. So I'm going to join another piece onto that. Now it will be the lining so you won't see it. So you've got the small pocket, three layers. You've got the middle size pocket, three layers and the long ruler pocket, three layers. And you will also need some fabric for straps. The strap fabric is just a four inch strip and it's going to be folded in both sides to make a one inch strap. So this is your strip of four inches in fact, across the fabric. Now, of course, there are details, exact details in the pattern, which will be available to you. And there's details of that at the end of this video. But for now, I'll just tell you that this is a four inch strip for the straps or handles, whichever you prefer to call them. All you will do is you will iron it in half and crease it, and then fold the outer edges into the crease, press it, and fold it over. It will make a one inch handle, one inch wide. Now to give it a little bit of extra support because you're going to be carrying it, and I don't like a bulky handle, you're going to stitch down the outer edges one eighth of an inch in. And I'm now going to take this other piece to the machine and show you there's quite an easy way that you can get a one eighth of an inch seam. On your bobbin cover, on most machines, there will be some marks, one eighth of an inch, three eighths, five eighths. Now, in between, of course, is my quarter inch foot, which is the quarter inch one. For the one eighth of an inch, you will, which you see there, you will line up your handle right on that line. And you don't have to look at this piece, the foot, you will just keep your eye on that line and you will line it up and feed it through all the way down for the perfect one eighth of an inch seam. I've cut the straps back to 30 inches. You can have them a little bit longer if you choose, but mine have worked out really well at 30 inches, each strap 30 inches, and put a pin exactly halfway across your fabric. So put your pin where I, I've got my pin in, I've just moved my fabric just a little bit, there you go. Now you need to leave a four inch gap in between your straps when you stitch them on. Now this is the top of your fabric. If you were putting applique on, you would already have it on here. You can put the applique on after you have put the straps on, but I found it easier just to put it on first. And as you know, I'm not using applique, I have a very busy fabric. so. That's your center line. I have got a crease line in here, which is half of my fabric folded over that way. And this is going to be the bottom of your carrier. So make sure it is 10 and a quarter inches 
from the edge of your work. There's the ten and a quarter mark. There is your strap. And just pin your strap into place. And using again your ruler, you need to put this one in the middle. Again, ten and a quarter. And pin it into place. And as you do, just overlap that a generous half to three quarters of an inch so that this is going to be zigzagged over the top. You won't need to neaten those edges. You're going to zigzag very closely over the top so that it will hide that. Coming to the bottom, we need our four inches again. Take my ruler, 10 and a quarter. Just need a pin for that. I'm going to pin that into place as well. I'll put some extra pins in here and then I'm going to stitch all the way from an inch in at the top of the raw edge, an inch in down over the one eighth of an inch line that you've already stitched on your handle, finishing one inch before the bottom on both of them. I've stitched on the handle going over the original stitch line that when we made that actual handles up and now I'm going to zigzag over the top raw edge where the handles join on the crease of the bottom of the bag and I'm using a 4.2 width zigzag and a 0.5 stitch length. So I'm just going to start that. Covering over all the raw edge. I've sewn the zigzag lines across the two joins, catching the one underneath in as well. There's the crease on the bottom of your bag. So this will now give you a bit of extra support right on the base of your bag where you need it. And if I now just flip this over, you'll see how that looks on the outside. That will be the look you have on the outside of your bag. The outside of our bag with the handles attached you can put aside. On the board now you will need to put your wadding and your lining fabric with the right side facing up before the next step. Our next step is to put the pockets on but we've got to make them up of course first and you've got your three layers, your wadding, your lining fabric, and your top fabric. And you can see there's our little join that we had when I added the extra piece. And I'm going to pin all the way around. Now this will be the bottom, so we're going to leave a four inch gap here for turning when we're turning this inside out. I'm going to pin all the way around, and with a quarter inch stitch, I'm going to stitch where I've pinned it all the way around and turn it inside out. I will clip the corners to give it a nice square finish. And then the result will be, because this will be the top, this is the uh, half, half size ruler pocket. The top I have stitched to give it a little bit more support. The bottom edge is open where I've turned it but it will be caught into the stitch line when I sew the pocket on. I must remember not to stitch this piece on. This is where your ruler is going to go inside. And the same applies for the six and a half inch ruler. So my pockets are all stitched now. They are stitched across the top as well, just a quarter inch um, seam across the top just to give that a bit of extra strength. I have with my Fiction Iron Off pen, drawn a line exactly halfway across my fabric, my quilt, and I'm positioning my pockets that are going to hold my rulers a quarter of an inch either side of that line. When they're close together, they will sit really nicely on the fold. So I'm going to stitch now from the top edge of the opening down across the bottoms, catching in that open seam that we left and up to the other corner on all three pockets. 
I've stitched my pockets on all the way around from the top leaving the open edge at the outside edge all the way around on all three pockets and if you remember we had the line drawn down so we could position the pockets approximately a quarter of an inch either side of that line. I'm now going to stitch down that line. It's going to include the outside fabric. I've just laid my pieces again on the outside fabric and I'm going to stitch through all three layers all the way down. I might stitch twice to give it a bit of extra stability and then apart from the binding, which we'll do then, we're finished. Before you put your binding on, because I've stitched across the middle now and I'm all ready to put my binding on, remember you must pin back your handles. The last thing you want is to stitch your handles into your binding. So just put a couple of pins in on the length there and just secure the handle, one across there on both edges and now you're ready to put your binding on. I'm now going to stitch on my binding. I've left around a five inch tail for joining and I'm starting on one of the short sides. Now I'm going to put this underneath my machine. Just a moment, there you go. Now, the thing is with this, I do binding differently because I like it to be very neat. So I'm starting with, this is a two and a half inch strip, so I'm starting with an ordinary foot and I'm lining up my selvage to the outside of the foot. When I come to machine the second side of the binding, I'm going to use my quarter inch foot. And for you to know how to do that, to get a perfect binding, you can refer to my handy hints number one and number two. It gives you details about the binding, corners, and how to join your binding in three different ways. So just using the outside of my foot, I'm just going to start sewing to with one, within one quarter inch of the corner. And as I said, you can follow my handy hint for this. And then I will turn around my binding, pull it back and sew down another edge and then all the way around until I come back to where I've started. So I've put the binding on all the way around and I've used the method shown in Handy Hint 1 and 2 to do that. Makes it nice and finished with the stitching, the machine stitching, picking up the binding on both sides. I've inserted my rulers. Now you can put more than one ruler in each pocket. If you do, my suggestion to you would be to put a piece of nice heavy card in the middle. It just protects the surface of your rulers and keeps them really nice. So you've got now your three pockets, three rulers. Draw up your handles and you're off, you're ready to go to class or to retreat, wherever you're going, to protect, and you've got this lovely protection for your rulers. And next time I'll be showing you how to make a carrier for your 12 and a half, nine and a half and six and a half inch rules, plus your cutter.